TedRackCoach.com, small pupil MSICS without rings or hooks. Here's how to perform this small or shelved incision cataract surgery. So here we go. We're starting off with a pyridomy. You can see surgeons seated superiorly, good positioning of the eyes, speculum is in, nice good exposure. And you start off with this pyridomy here. We sped the video up, of course. A little bit of cautery here to achieve some hemostasis. Now the key to the whole surgery, of course, is the incision. Now, we're going to start off here, after the cautery is done, making this incision. And the key is it's a shelved incision. It's a long tunnel length. It's not like the old days of manual ECCE, the extra caps or cataracts already done with corneal No, no, no. This is far better. So you can see there's a little bit of a groove, half scleral depth only. And once you achieve that half scleral depth groove, now get that crescent blade, and you're going to nicely dissect a tunnel. Now, remember, this is going to be a little bit trapezoidal in nature. So the inside opening in the eye is going to be a little larger than the outside opening. So again, nicely constructed. Look at the tunnel length. So at least a couple millimeters before you even enter the AC. Remember, at this point, the AC is not entered. Now, here's a side port incision, probably going to be used for a Simcoe cannula later. And here's another one on the other side, or maybe by manual IA. And you can see it's definitely a small pupil. Now, you can put in some hooks and stretch out the pupil if you'd like. You can put in a ring, but this surgeon's going to do it without. So breaking any sneaky there. And now, once the sneaky are broken, if there are any, you want to do a little bit of pupil stretching here. You need to get better exposure. Because remember, you need to get a good 5 millimeter or larger capsule rexis. So you sometimes can use some pharmacologic agents, maybe put in some um, epinephrine or phenylephrine. Or you can also just do like this and do a pupil stretch. So two hooks and just kind of stretching out that pupil. This will cause some micro sphincter tears at the pupil margin. You can then put more viscoelastic in OSHA's technique of viscomedrisis. And again, as long as you can get a 5 millimeter capsule rexus, you're going to be good. Now, it's not too dense of a cataract. You can see it's a reasonable cataract here. Surgeon's going in. I'm not sure why we're removing viscoelastic at this point. But okay, going in there with that uh, that's why, because tripen blue dye. So sometimes you'll have a hard time. If you use like HPMC, the HPMC will prevent the tripen blue dye from staying in the capsule. So you may also want to put a little tiny aliquot of the tripen under the iris so you get full exposure, full staining of the capsule. Now here, zooming in and getting a juicy 5 millimeter capsule rexus. Don't make a baby rexus here. Now, in this case, you're going to make the rexus bigger than the pupil. And so that's nicely done. Again, you have to get the nucleus out of the bag here. So now entering the AC through the main incision, widening that up. Clearly, this surgeon has a lot of experience with this. That's a nice incision. And now a little gentle hydro dissection. You want to get this nucleus out of the bag. So take your time here. The nucleus needs to come out of the bag. There it is. And you also ideally want it on, on top of the capsule and then on top of the iris. I'd like this whole lens in the AC. Now you can see partly in the AC. That's probably enough to put the... Uh, lens loop underneath it, but there you go. Now the whole lens is in the AC. That makes it a lot easier. More viscoelastic behind it to protect the bag, and viscoelastic in front of it to protect the corneal endothelium. Now, here you go. Put the lens loop in and gently pull it out. Don't scrape the uh, endothelium. Now, that's a nicely done case. Hey, did I tell you about Retina Rounds, our sister channel? So much great material. I promise you're going to love it. If you're a cataract surgeon like me, you'll still love it. Now, going over the Simcoe cannula to remove the cortex. Make sure you really get all the cortex out. So in a case like this, I'd like to have a Simcoe cannula in one hand or I probably let's say in one hand. And then the other hand, be able to expose or lift up the iris to make sure I can check the complete capsule bag. Or... Alternatively, at the end, once you put a viscoelastic in the bag and put the eye on the bag with the eye full of viscoelastic, use your chopper or second instrument or a hook to just lift up the iris 360 to make sure that, number one, the eye well is in the capsule bag, and number two, there is no retained lens material or cortex that's adherent to the capsule bag equator here. So there's our viscoelastic going inside the eye, and we're going to put our lens in. Let's see what we got here. And it looks like, there we go, get that lens nicely dialed in. Maybe even, is, it, is that a PMA lens, maybe? Perhaps it is. Yeah, it looks like a PMMA lens, so polymethylmethacrate, non-foldable lens. And that goes in, and just make sure it's in the capsule bag. And here's where I like to lift up the IRS 360. Surgeon's putting a suture in. I agree, you know, I do M6 a couple times a month, once or twice a month. And in my cases, I like to put a suture in too. In fact, I like to put a couple sutures in, just to be sure it helps me sleep better at night. That I know that even if the patient touches or rubs the eye, we're going to be fine. There's that one suture looking good. Get it rotated. Now take out the viscoelastic. You can see even with the Simcoe cannula infusing fluid in the eye, there is no leakage from that main incision here. 
So cleaning out that uh, viscoelastic and the end of the case, you're pretty much done. But again, just make sure lift up the iris right here. It'll let, it'll let you sleep better at night knowing that there is no surprise cortex to get to see the next morning. Now the incision sealed up beautifully. Time to close the conjunctiva. I encourage you, if you have not learned MSICS because you're a little bit afraid of it, that's okay. You can learn. I promise you it's not that difficult. It's a fantastic technique. Maybe a case like this, yeah, you say, okay, I would have done FACO. Okay, fair enough. But for a truly brunescent, dense rock, which I've showed you videos of, even in Beverly Hills, I'm doing MSICS for those cases. It really is a wonderful procedure. Here, a little card right here to close the conch. Nicely done. Remember, check out retinarounds.com, our sister channel. So much great material. You're going to love it, even if you're just a guy like me who does cataracts all day. You still love it.